here to discuss Piper Sandler's Harsh Kumar. Harsh, um, I have to ask you, because Broadcom, you've got a uh, price target, about 975 here. So current trading is about 10 percent below where you see this uh, stock in the next 12 months or so. What do you see as, at this point, the catalyst to the upside? Yeah, so, so we actually love the stock. Let me just start off there. <clears throat> I think what you have to remember is every other semiconductor company went through a correction over the last two years. So you talk about NVIDIA went through a massive correction about nine months ago. AMD went through some channel stuffing and clearing, went through a correction about nine months ago. Broadcom never saw any of that. So this is actually the first time that they're seeing a correction. And it's almost like a tale of two cities. They've got the generative AI and the AI business that is literally, quite literally on fire. It grew, it's supposed to grow 50% on a sequential basis in the October quarter. And then there's like everything else. And the everything else or the core business is basically flattish. So if you tell me um, that I've got a company that in a down cycle is going to do flattish, I would say that's a perfect textbook uh, soft landing that was executed. So they did actually extremely well. In terms of catalysts that are coming up, the generative AI and the AI piece will continue to, to rise for them, I think all the way through 2025 and even beyond. And then they've, don't forget, they've got the VMware deal that's coming up. That deal, uh, we've done the math on it, is about $10 accretive um, after they, they do the cost cutting, which, which Broadcom is famous for, and they bring the, the company up to snuff. Uh, we, can, we can see up to $10 of accretion in the EPS from that. So those are the two big catalysts, I would say. Yeah, but the, the stock is trading about 21 times your 2024 uh, estimate. That's a, a premium to its peer group. Is that warranted? Uh, it's, so the earnings will change quite dramatically. So what's happening here is the VMware deal is not a part of the estimates because it hasn't officially closed. So when the VMware deal closes and some details come out around what the accretion will be, you will on average see estimates rise from anywhere between $8 and $12 is my guess. And, and the EPS will therefore rise by 20 something odd percent. Um, and, and that'll basically bring the multiple back into, into uh, the, the range that it's supposed to be at. Uh, one thing that stood out in the uh, the Broadcom uh, print harsh was uh, sort of the the slowdown, or I guess softness, relative softness in telco and uh, and enterprise. I, I, I just wonder whether or not that is the result of so much emphasis on AI at the moment. It, it, it could be. I think storage has got an inventory problem. So you've got other companies such as Marvell that talked about storage issues. And this has been storage has been under pressure because of excess inventory for about nine months to a year. And it'll probably still take another quarter to two quarters to work itself out. That's about a billion dollars a quarter or four billion dollars a year business for Broadcom. Uh, on the telco side, I think it's just macro. When you've got interest rates this high, it puts a lot of pressure on capex intensive businesses and telco is a very capex capex intensive business so that's underwater a little bit it'll slow down a little bit in this coming quarter but then it should stabilize like i said if you can give me a company which is flattish in a down cycle i'll take that all day long and if i can couple that with some high growth businesses such as generative ai then i come out that much better Mm. And you've, of course, got ARM IPO uh, coming down the pike, which could, you know, adjust some of the, the sorting into that, that category as well. Harsh, thank you so much.